There are so many brushes available on the market. It can be really daunting to know which one to choose for you. I have realized after observing my friends getting ready that most people are using the wrong brush for their hair type or they're using the right brush the wrong way. Today we're going to be talking all about brushes and I'm going to be walking you through a wet to dry routine so that you know which brush to use, when and how. Let's go. After you wash your hair, the first thing that you need to do is detangle it. And the easiest way to do that is by using a detangling brush. You have likely heard of the wet brush before. Wet brush is actually a brand that makes detangling brushes and other brushes. A lot of people don't actually know that, but there are detangling brushes that are not by the wet brush brand like this one by Framar. Detangling brushes all do the same thing. So it doesn't have to be the wet brush brand for it to work. Although that is a great brand and I have a lot of brushes by them and I do love them. With that said though, I bet you are wondering what is the difference between between a detangling brush and just a regular brush, right? I'm gonna show you the difference right now because there is a huge difference. They are not the same at all. I'm gonna put equal amounts of pressure on both of these brushes. This one is a detangling brush and this one is not. As you can see here with the detangling brush, the bristles move in a really flexible way. They move to the side and up and down when pressure is put on them. Whereas here with this brush, the bristles hardly move because they are harder. So why does this even matter, right? Why does it matter? Well, it matters a lot because when your hair is wet, it tangles, but it's also very elastic so it breaks very easily. Your hair is much more easily damaged when it's wet than when it's dry. That's why it is so important to be extra careful and gentle when your hair is wet. Because of the flexibility, right, of these detangling bristles, it works the knots out of the hair easily with little to like no damage. This is an amazing tool to have for those people with super fine high density hair. So you know those people who have like a ton of fine hair? If you're one of those people, let me know in the comments. You'll notice that your hair tends to tangle like crazy when it's wet, so it's great to have a detangling brush because you'll finally be able to get through it without, you know, really ripping through those knots on your wet hair. That's like a disaster, it's a complete disaster. Honestly, everyone should have one of these. They're really great brushes. Now that our hair is detangled, we typically part our hair before we blow dry it and a great way to do that is by using a tail comb. So let's talk about the tail comb next. This is obviously a comb and not a brush, but I really wanted to include it because it is a great tool to have. Of all the combs available out there, this is my favorite one to use. If I was on a deserted island and I could only have one comb for the rest of my life, this would be, this would be my comb. This would come with me. You would be my comb. The benefit of having this tail section here is that you can get a really precise part line. If you hold the tail flat to your head and move it back in the direction that you want it to go, you will get a perfect line every time. This is especially handy if you like to do a disorganized part line or a zigzag part. I did a whole video on different parts and how they change the look of your face. So if you're interested in watching that one, I will leave a link to it in the pinned comment below and in the cards here, but watch this video first and then go over there. This is a comb that absolutely anyone will benefit from having. Now that we're parted, let's move on to the brushes that we use for blow drying the hair. Before we get into those brushes, I just want to show you this really sexy little blow dryer that I'm going to be demoing with today. The SRI Dry Q has partnered with me to make this video possible and I couldn't be happier to show it to you guys. About a year ago, I got the first edition of this blow dryer and I was using it for all of my on location bridal clients because it is super tiny and portable, which is exactly what I needed, but it's still very powerful, okay? I mean, very powerful. So anyways, I already had a lot of experience using it, but then in the fall of last year when I was in LA, the company invited me to their head office and showed me all of the research and development that they were doing with it. It was awesome. It really was awesome to get like a sneak peek in person and also to give them some feedback on the first generation one. And now that this one's come to market with all of its new features, it's been like a full circle experience to see that all come out. This blow dryer was great before, but it's extra amazing now. My favorite thing about it, like I said, 
is that it's small, but the size of it doesn't sacrifice the power of it. It's just as powerful as a regular size blow dryer, even though it only weighs 11.8 ounces, making it one of the lightest blow dryers on the market. If you are someone that travels a lot, you're gonna want this blow dryer because really it's so tiny and it's super powerful. Or if you're someone who has issues with, you know, your arms or mobility, or it's hard for you to hold heavy things above your head for a long period of time, this really is an amazing blow dryer because it's small, it's super light, it's super powerful. I will leave a link to it in the description box. It's definitely worth checking out. And if you use my code and I will pop it up right here, you also get money off. It's always great, right? When you can get something and you can save a bunch of cash along the way. Now let's talk about round brushes. There is a lot of confusion with this and I get it. It's kind of confusing, but there are two main types, okay? Boar bristle and ceramic. Let's talk about ceramic first because it will clarify a lot. Round brushes like these ones have a ceramic barrel that heat up and smooth the hair out almost like a hot roller does, but while simultaneously smoothing down the cuticle. In terms of the size, I know you're gonna ask that. The rule of thumb is that the shorter the hair, the smaller the diameter of brush you need. So for example, if you have a long pixie, this one, which is one and three quarters of an inch, will be too big for you. You won't be able to get like that bevel that you may want. So you, you may wanna get one that is one inch or even one that's like one and three eighths of an inch. I have one here somewhere. I like this one, okay? So see the difference? This one's a little bigger, this one's a little smaller. I wouldn't use a smaller one on longer hair, but if you have like a long pixie or anything like shorter than chin length, this one may be handy, especially for like the nape area that's gonna be especially short. Another rule of thumb is that the smaller the brush, the more curl you get in your blow dry or the more movements you get. So if you want a ton of shaping, you can blow dry, whoops. <laughs> You can blow dry with a smaller round brush and use smaller sections. The top of this just popped out. Take two. The only thing with that though is that it will take a much longer time to get through your hair and I don't find the shape holds as well as if you just blow dry your hair out with volume and then use a curling iron. That's why for anyone with mid-length hair or longer, I always just use a one and three quarter inch round brush. The smaller ones are just too much work with too little payoff and the bigger sizes after this size just don't really give me enough movement. So I don't even bother using them ever, even with people with very long hair. Okay, moving on to the boar bristle round brush. The boar, the boar bristle round brushes. These brushes are firmer and denser and they will give you way more tension when blow drying. You'll get a lot more pull. The reason people like these brushes is because the natural bristles distribute oil from the scalp into the hair very effectively. So it's known to make the hair very shiny. Also, because they don't have a barrel that heat up, there is an argument that they are less damaging. I don't buy it, but there's an argument for that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I have this brush, but I can count on like one hand how many times I've used it. It grips and pulls a lot, which I don't find to be overly comfortable for most people. I also find that it takes a lot longer to get through the hair since it doesn't have vents like the ceramic barrel does. So the hair doesn't dry as quickly. I also don't find that the hair looks shinier when I use it. It increases the hassle, increases the time it takes to dry the hair, but without increasing the gain. Right? So I just don't ever find that I'm winning with this brush. Okay, there is a thing though. The only time that I do reach for this, the only time that I think it makes a difference is when I'm working with someone with very curly hair that's resistant to straightening because this gives so much more tension. I do find that I can get more control. I can get a smoother result on a very tight curl pattern if I use the boar bristle brush. That's literally the only time, the only time I reach for it. The next brush is the vent brush. These are also used for blow drying. You can get a narrow one like this, which is great for short hair or even men's hair, or you can get a wider one like this. This will give you a straight blow dry without any bevel. The results from a blow dry using a vent brush really is very different than the results from a blow dry using a round brush. A round brush will give you like a 90s flippy look that's very in style right now. And the vent brush will give you a smooth and straight look. You can use also, you can use this brush to lift the hair up. So when you're blow drying, you can lift it up at the root and blow dry it to infuse more volume. 
but mostly what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your blow dryer at the top and you're going to slide down to really smooth out the cuticle. And because it's vented, it does blow dry the hair very quickly. Now I do find that this brush only works for people with naturally straight and smooth hair. This will reduce frizz in that hair type for sure, but it will not give control to people with very textured hair. I did a demo to show you on my hair, but I could never actually reach for this brush and do my whole head with it because my hair has way too much wave and frizz and this brush would never be able to control that. My husband, on the other hand, who is Chinese, would love this brush because his hair is already smooth and glossy. So it would just help him get that volume at the top. So keep that in mind if you decide to buy it. It's definitely, definitely better for people with straight, smooth hair. Another brush that's an absolute staple for me is the teasing brush. This is a boar bristle brush that's very thin and has hairs of multiple lengths. This is a great brush when you wanna get volume in your crown or at the front because it creates a nice tight back comb, but the texture of the bristles allows you to smooth out the top really well too. If you prefer a comb over like a brush, you can also get a teasing comb like this one. It's the same concept really. You have these longer teeth and then these tiny teeth at the bottom that work to create that cushiony back comb. One quick tip for you is that if you are back combing, make sure to back comb in, you know, narrow layers. A lot of people don't get good results with their back combing and it's because they're making a few like really key mistakes when they're doing it. If you guys want me to do a whole video on back combing, please let me know in the comment section. I can definitely do that for you. Back combing really is a great way to get long lasting results and volume in fine hair or even like fuller hair, but you have to do it well or it's, it's not going to do it's not gonna do you any, any good. Finally, I wanna talk about the natural hair bristle brush. Again, the reason people love this brush is because it does a really good job of distributing oils from the scalp down to the hair shaft. If you have an oily scalp, it may be a good idea to get one of these and to use it as your daily brush, like your morning brush when your hair is dry because it will take that oil build up away from the scalp and give your hair like an overall shine. This reduction of oil buildup on the scalp could also potentially allow you to wash your hair less often, which is great if you struggle with that, right? Oily people, oily scalps tend to feel like they have to wash all the time. If you feel that way, maybe you need a natural hair bristle brush so that you can distribute that oil every single day. It may give you another day or so without having to wash. Another thing that this is very good for, I just taught my friend this, she has a daughter with curly hair. This is very good for creating sleek up styles. So if you wanna put your hair up in a super sleek and smooth updo, like a sleek ponytail, these natural bristles will be able to give you that effect way easier than a plastic bristle can. I actually have one of these also from the brand Wet Brush, and these are natural bristles and plastic bristles, so it's kind of like a two-in-one, and it's awesome. I use this brush all the time. You can use this for detangling, but you can also use this for styling. That's it, video's over.